So hello everyone and welcome to this short training event, which is the last in a series of four about Galaxy Australia. And this training session will focus on Galaxy Australia's use as a tool for processing Amplicon sequencing data for metagenomics. My name is Jeff Christensen and I'm from the EMBL Australia Bioinformatics Resource or EMBL AVR and I'll be your host for today. Um, we also have my colleague Christina Hall from EMBL AVR who's in Melbourne and she's also behind the scenes co-hosting this webinar with me. Uh, EMBL AVR is a distributed national research infrastructure and we provide bioinformatics support to life science researchers in Australia. We're set up to maximise Australia's bioinformatics capability and we currently have 13 nodes, which are shown here on this slide, um, around the country and each of these nodes undertake or support bioinformatics activities around several key areas. Uh, this is shown on the right. So these key areas are data, compute, tools, platforms, standards and training. So a major uh, priority across the EMBL ABR network and one of our key areas is bioinformatics training. And this is why we partner with Galaxy Australia to uh, deliver this series of training events. So in this short uh, introductory session, we're gonna explore Galaxy Australia, uh, which is an open access, free to use portal for all Australian life science researchers. Um, and, it's, and it's used for performing data manipulation and analysis. We're gonna specifically look at how it can be used as a tool for analyzing Amplicon sequencing metagenomics data. Here we have 84 uh, registrants across 11 sites in five Australian states and also in Malaysia at Monash, Malaysia. So the lead trainer today is Dr. Anna Syme, who is the bioinformatics training lead on the Galaxy Australia service. Um, and she's based at Melbourne Bioinformatics at the University of Melbourne, where she works on microbial genomics. Her previous research includes studies in crustacean biology and systematics, mapping the evolutionary gain and loss of complex characters and using molecular data to investigate the speciation rates of taxonomic groups such as Australian grasses. Anna has worked at Museum Victoria, uh, University of California, Santa Barbara and the Royal Botanic Gardens, Melbourne. Today we also have 17 facilitators across the participating sites um, and these facilitators have all volunteered their time um, both in attending a two-day training event several months ago, as well as in organising the event at your node, um, and, and of course being there today to facilitate the training locally. So without their help, uh, this event wouldn't be possible, so we'd like to take this uh, opportunity to acknowledge all of the uh, facilitators for donating their time and all of their efforts in organising and facilitating this event. Um, in uh, Far North Queensland at JCU, we have two sites with Ashley Wardenberg in Cairns and Ira Cook in Townsville. At USQ in Toowoomba, we have Nilifar Vahegi. In Hobart at the University of Tasmania, Mike Charleston. In Sydney at the University of Sydney, we have Rosemary Satsad and Tracy Chu, who also has assistance today from UNSW's Xavier Vasquez Campos. At the University of Queensland in St. Lucia, we have Gareth Price and Eagle McCoonan. In Adelaide, Juan Carlos Sanchez, who's being helped by Uta Bauman. In Melbourne at Monash, we have two sites. At the Clayton campus, we have Sonica Tiagi and Yang Hu. And at Monash Hudson, Sen Wang. Also in Victoria, at the University of Melbourne, we have Simon Gladman and Veronica Liu. And finally, in Kuala Lumpur at Monash, Malaysia, we have Zarul Hanifa. Uh, before I hand over to Anna, I'll just mention some logistics and how to get involved in this session. So Anna is obviously delivering the content over video conferencing today. So all 11 sites will generally be muted throughout the session. Uh, that's to stop background noise, especially when Anna's speaking. Uh, at certain times during the session, however, we can unmute a particular site so uh, the facilitator can talk directly with Anna. You should have also been given some post-it notes by your facilitator, uh, one pink and one green. I have post-it notes there. Um, if you have any issues, please just pop the red or pink one somewhere visible um, on, on your laptop, and that's just to flag to your facilitator that you need some help. Um, and you can use the green one just to show that everything's fine. Um, we also have a shared uh, discussion board. So this is a Google document, but everyone can edit and raise questions in that uh, particular document online. So that's visible to everybody. The link is shown here on the slide. It's also in the, um, in the, uh, the uh, run sheet, which you've been uh, provided with. 
So you can use that discussion board to ask any questions. You can answer other people's questions or make comments. Um, we have a few people who will be looking at the discussion board uh, periodically um, and will be able to answer questions. So Anna's also going to be looking at that. Uh, in the discussion board, I'd just like to draw your attention to a link at the top, which is to Embol ABR's Code of Conduct, and that outlines the behaviour that's expected at this or any Embol ABR event. So this is both in the physical location that you're sitting, but also as well online, which includes the discussion board. So in a nutshell, um, all participants at our events are expected to make the event welcoming for everybody present and to show respect and courtesy to all others. So please read that document to make sure you're familiar with the content. And finally, uh, if you miss anything today or, or, or you wanna go back and review any of it, uh, this session is being recorded um, and it'll be made available on the Emble ABR YouTube channel for your future reference. So we'll let everybody know uh, via email when these are available. It'll generally be in about a week. All right, so what I will now do is hand over to Anna, um, who will start to share her screen. And I will see you later. Thanks, Jeff. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, I've put up the uh, schedule here on my screen. So, uh, that has all the links to everything that we're looking at today. If you find that you missed something, just go back to this link. It's at tinyurl.com slash Galaxy Workshop 4. If you lose that link, just ask your local facilitator and they can um, help you find it again. And as Jeff said, we also have this discussion board. So that's tinyurl.com slash Galaxy Workshop 4 hyphen discussion. So please make use of that. So I'll give a brief introduction to our workshop today. We are looking at an introduction to Galaxy Australia and specifically we're going to look at metagenomics. So our aims today are to familiarise you with Galaxy Australia if you haven't used it before. That will be quite brief but we'll give you enough information so that you can do the workshop today. We are going to introduce metagenomics and to do that we're going to do a tutorial where we use a bacterial data set from two soil samples. And in that process we'll demonstrate how to use some of these common tools that are currently in Galaxy Australia to investigate metagenomics. But just some disclaimers, obviously this is a three hour workshop so it's quite short. So a lot of our content has to be by necessity very brief. So uh, our introduction will be brief, but I'll give you further resources at the end if you want to look into metagenomics in more detail. We are using bacterial data and we are just doing Amplicon metagenomics today. So that involves a single gene, the 16S gene, and not whole genomes. And we'll look at some of the common tools to investigate metagenomics, but we won't cover all of the available tools today. So today we'll cover the basics of Galaxy Australia and we'll log in and then we'll do a hands-on workshop where we look at metagenomics um, of 16S and we're going to use a suite of tools um, called Mother. And our process today will be going from the raw data to what we call operational taxonomic units. So they're, they're proxy for taxa. So we're going from raw data, identifying our taxa and then we can evaluate the diversity between samples. So we'll do that in our workshop, but we are not going to be covering any statistical analyses that um, people might want to do across populations. Um, but again, I'll be providing some resources if you want to keep working on your um, analyses. So metagenomics, uh, in context, there are a few Australian projects going on. There's the Australian Microbiome Initiative, and I've put a link there if you want to read more about that. And that's aiming to produce um, an, a continental scale metagenomic survey of lots of different environments across Australia. So that data is hosted on a BioPlatform's data portal. And then there's the Australian Environmental Microbiome Research Data Cloud Project, 
and I have a link there to a blog about that project. And that's aiming to take all of this metagenomics data and make it a lot more accessible, um, in particular connecting that data portal with Galaxy Australia. So there's a lot of work going on in um, both getting the data and making it available to researchers. As I said, this is our schedule today and uh, we will um, finish the workshop um, in three hours, but some of the timing in that schedule is approximate. I'd like to thank all the local facilitators at each of the nodes, the people involved in the RDC project in particular, um, Jeff Christensen and Mike Thang, the DEVIL project, which is the um, Galaxy Australia project, so in particular Gareth, Simon, Igor, Derek and Nguyen. So they do a lot of the behind the scenes works, behind the scenes work and getting all the tools available. Amber ABR, I'd like to thank Christina Hall, Jeff Christensen and Pip Griffin for all of their support. And thank you for everyone who's coming to these workshops. Um, hope you're finding them useful. And here are all of our funders and our supporters. So now I'm going to cover a very brief introduction to Galaxy Australia. Uh, many of you may have used Galaxy Australia before. We've run three workshops uh, this year specifically for uh, introducing Galaxy Australia. But if you haven't, that's fine too. And I'll just briefly cover some of the main features that you would need to know about for today's workshop. The main thing is with Galaxy is that you access it via a web page. Um, so you enter the Galaxy server address in the um, address bar and the interface has a tool panel. So that's all the things you can do. And then it has a history panel on the right. And the history panel is a record, record of all of the um, analysis that you've done. So the files that you've uploaded, the tools that you've used and their outputs. And you can make lots of different histories when you use Galaxy. So it has been designed for biologists, so hopefully it's fairly user friendly and it takes a lot of these command line tools and it wraps them to give them this um, nice user interface that you can access in that centre panel. And the really useful thing is that it keeps these histories of what you've done in your analysis. So you can either rerun it quite easily or you can share it with other people. We are using the Australian Galaxy server today, and the address of that is usegalaxy.org.au, but there are lots of different galaxies around the world. The main things are that, as I said, you enter the address in the address bar. There's the tools on the left-hand side. This is what we call the centre panel, and that has either the results files or the tool interface. The history panel on the right hand side, this history panel is currently empty. And some useful buttons in the top panel. When you run a tool, when that tool has finished running, the file will be green. And you can click on the eye icon to view the, that file in the center panel. A particularly useful button is this button that lets you view all of your histories. It's in the top right hand side of the history panel and that shows you all of the histories that you've made before if you have used Galaxy before. If you haven't used Galaxy before and you want to learn more about it, there's a link here to learn some key tasks. But that's not essential for today's workshop. Uh, Galaxy Australia is part of the BioDevil project, project managed by Gareth Price. So now we will have a look at our tutorial, or getting it set up for our tutorial. Um, what I recommend is having the Galaxy page open in one browser tab and the training page open in another tab. If that's not possible, just have the Galaxy page open. But if you can have them both open, then that can be an easy way to follow the tutorial. And the tutorial um, is part of our training webpage and all of the different topics can be accessed by clicking on this 
three bar icon. So I'm going to now do a, oh, I'm going to show you now how to uh, log into Galaxy Australia if you haven't uh, used it before. Um, I'll also show you how to register. Okay, so the main thing we need to do first is enter the address of Galaxy Australia in our address bar. So if everyone can open up a browser and in the address bar, enter usegalaxy.org.au. And that should bring you to the Galaxy page. And then there's in the uh, top menu bar, there's a user button. Your button might say register or login. So click on that button and then either log in or if you haven't used Galaxy Australia before, click register. So I'm just going to wait a few minutes while everyone registers and logs in. Please let me know on the chat window if any, anyone's having troubles. And there are, as I said, lots of different Galaxy servers. So you might have used another Galaxy server. And in that case, you will need to register for Galaxy Australia because the different Galaxy servers don't really talk to each other. So um, you'll need to register for Galaxy Australia as well. So I'll start on a brief introduction to metagenomics. But as I said, if you're having trouble uh, logging in or registering, please let your local facilitator know. So to start with, um, I've got some introductory slides. I'm using these um, thanks to the Galaxy Training Network, which is a um, international group who work on um, training materials for all the different Galaxy servers. So thank you to them for these slides. So metagenomics in a nutshell is really looking at the microorganisms that live in an, in an environment. So sometimes that's called the microbiome. There are two main approaches for looking at metagenomics and these are amplicon sequencing where we look at one gene or shotgun sequencing, where we look at all of the genetic material in that environment. So I'll briefly talk about those two approaches and then some analysis pipelines and visualization options. There are lots of reasons we might want to study the microbiome. Uh, healthcare research is a main reason. Um, there are lots of organisms, obviously, on humans, and there are so many that sometimes that's referred to as our second genome. So knowing about what's living in different environments or different parts of a human can have a big effect on understanding health and understanding medications. We also might be interested in environmental microbiomes. So in our workshop today, we are looking at two soil samples and we're looking at the bacteria living in those two groups of samples. So that might be interesting just from a purely theoretical point of view, but also because things living in environments are also affecting the whole ecosystem. Um, and often there's a lot of research involved in agriculture looking at soil microbiomes. So as an analogy, if we're comparing shotgun versus amplicon metagenomics, Shotgun metagenomics, you can think of it as um, each genome in that environment being represented by a jigsaw puzzle and 
when we sequence all the material, we're really jumbling up all of the puzzles and trying to work out what those original puzzles were. So that gives us a lot of information, but it's also expensive and quite complex. So another approach, or, and the original approach, was what we call amplicon sequencing, where we don't sequence the whole genomes of individuals in that environment. We just target usually one gene. And so we have primers to find that gene. So in bacteria for today's workshop, we will look at the 16S gene. So obviously that's not giving us any information about the other genes that uh, are present in that environment. So we are not getting a lot of functional information, but it does help us identify the taxa present and it's obviously cheaper and less complex. So there are pros and cons for each approach. So in amplicon sequencing, as I said, we'll, today we'll look at the 16S gene. And that's, that's a really nice gene to use for metagenomics because it has this combination of both very conserved uh, regions, meaning you can identify um, lots of different bacteria, but it also has these variable regions or V regions and they allow us to get to finer taxonomic um, levels, often to genus level. So it's well established, it's not very expensive, but um, there's always um, cons with every approach and um, in particular using the 16S V regions, sometimes the choice of particular V region can bias your results and sometimes the, the um, V regions are not variable enough to get to species level. So we can often get to genus level, but not always species or strains. With shotgun metagenomics, um, we obviously get a lot more information and we get a lot of this functional information, but it can be expensive and quite complex. In a really simplified sense, what we do in metagenomics is the sampling, DNA extraction, we amplify all the DNA, we do some next generation sequencing, and then the bioinformatics steps. And we'll be looking today at some of the bioinformatics involved. Obviously there's going to be lots and lots of data generated whenever we do metagenomics. So one of the things that's involved in our pipelines is, um, really sort of narrowing down this data to get the information that we need, but um, making it manageable. So to compare to um, broad pipelines, we have Amplicon metagenomics and shotgun metagenomics. Both of them will involve pre-processing and QC of the data. And there's some of the steps in these pipelines are a little bit different, but they all end up with assigning a taxonomy to the sequences in those samples. Shotgun metagenomics can also give us this functional information about the genes. And then both approaches can give us a, um, a visualisation of the structure of the community. When we do pre-processing, one of the things we need to do is filter out um, poor quality reads or trim ends of poor quality reads. We might also do a step where we remove these chimeras, which are sort of hybrid sequences generated during PCR, where two similar sequences sort of get um, joined together and then amplified. So that can be quite a problem. So um, often there's a, a step involved in removing these chimeras. Uh, another step is clustering these OTUs, these operational taxonomic units. And we cluster on 97% sequence similarity. And we use that sort of as a proxy for um, genus level. So we group things that are more than 97% similar. And that should represent a genus. One of the things we'll do in our workflow today is compare our data to a reference database. Um, 
there's several of these databases and the one that you choose can influence your results. So it's important to know what database you're using and it's um, the advantages of that database. Today we'll use the SILVER database, which is a, a ribosomal RNA database. And I'll talk about that more when we get up to that step. If we were doing shotgun metagenomics, we'd also have a step where we were looking at um, functional information. And so we might be looking at identifying gene families or functional categories. One of our results that we get in metagenomics is what we call an OTU table. So it's a table of these operational taxonomic units, these proxy for taxa, and their identification in a hierarchical sense. So you can see here we have OTU number one, and that's been identified as bacteria, and then all the way down to genus Staphylococcus. Today we're also going to look at a tool called Crona, and this gives a really nice pie chart of abundances of different taxa. So that's a nice, that's our end point in today's workflow. There are other tools available. One of them is called Finch, and that is worth looking at if you're working in metagenomics that has a lot of nice um, visualizations available. There are related tutorials for metagenomics, um, particularly on the Galaxy Training Network, and I'll give links to those at the end of today's workshop. So thank you very much to the Galaxy Training Network for the use of these slides and also for the workshop material that we're going to be using today. So that's a very brief overview of metagenomics, but I also want to go into some detail about the workflow that we're using today. So I have another set of slides. So today we're using the collection of tools um, called Mother. And in Galaxy, each of these tools has a name. And so you'll hear me talk about tools like filter.sex or classify.otu. And they're the individual tools in that suite of tools. There's some links here to more information about Mother. And if you are using Mother in a research sense, um, obviously you'll want to know more about what each of the tools are doing. And Mother has a really nice wiki page and a lot of information about each of the, each of the tools. So I highly recommend looking at those links. The main steps in our analysis today, and this is highly simplified, but I wanted to give an overview, a visual overview. So we are using DNA from two soil samples. So they're from Argentinian um, two types of soil. We're taking the, that DNA, it's in a fast day format, faster format, and then we're doing this workflow. And the main steps are that we are removing any duplicate sequences, but we keep a record of how many um, sequences per type of sequence. Then we actually take our um, unique sequences and we align them to an existing alignment of multiple bacteria for the 16S gene. So that helps us um, in our data quality. Then we do a clustering step. So we cluster similar sequences together and then we classify those clusters. So this is a, a little bit simplified, but in a general sense, that's what we're doing today. And our endpoint today, we are going to look at an abundance pie chart for two groups of samples. So we'll compare the taxa in the two sample groups. So I've done this in a little bit more detail, um, not to be overwhelming, but this might even be useful if you're interested in looking at this after the workshop, um, or if you get confused during the workshop about which step we're up to. So I've annotated the workflow that we're going to do today. So to start with, we will have our input faster files. So we'll have two files. 
we will merge these into one file. We'll also make um, an information file about what we've done and that will tell us which read is in which sample. So don't worry if you don't remember what I'm saying here. This is just to give you a more detailed overview of what we're going to do. Then we do the step where we remove the duplicate sequences. Then we count the number of sequences per sample. You can see in this workflow that the tool names that we're going to use are at the top of each of these squares. So that Step there is the count dot six step. Then we will do a summary dot six step, and the log file from that will give us some information for um, quality control. So we'll use that information um, in the screen dot six tool. We'll filter out some long reads and some short reads. Then we'll take this filtered faster file and we will align it to an existing alignment that we get from a database. We will use the silver database. And then we will again look at another log file just to see where all these sequences are aligning. We will remove any sequences that don't align well. We will remove sequences that align past the area that we're interested in. We will just be looking at the V4 region, which is the one of those variable regions within the 16S gene. Then we will do a step where we cluster sequences if they've got less than two differences between them. So that's where we're hypothesizing there may be some errors caused by sequencing. So we will just cluster those sequences together. Then we will do a classification step where we have some um, input files to give us information about what these sequences are. Then we will do a step called cluster.split and this will give a classification to each of our sequences. We would do a, another step called make.shared. And this is where we're starting to get our output tables of information. So this table will give us the count of sequences per OTU per sample type. So we have two sample types here. This will all make sense, more sense when we do the tutorial, but just to give you an overview of all of these steps. Then we will do a, a classify.otu step so this is really representing the information in a different way. This will give us a column of OTUs, the count of the sequences, and then the taxon that they've been assigned to. We'll take that information, we will format it for the Krona tool, and then we will use this Krona tool where we get these nice pie charts of the abundances. So the results from the workflow today is where we classify the sequence groups into operational taxonomic units, assign them a taxonomy, and then we get um, different groups of information. We can either have the OTUs that are present per sample or the OTU abundances per sample. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we'll have a look at the tutorial. So once again, there's a link to that tutorial in today's schedule. So that's um, this Galaxy, Galaxy Workshop 4 schedule. There's a link to the tutorial within that. So I will have my Galaxy window open in one uh, browser tab and I'll have the tutorial information open in another tab. But if that's too much to fit on your screen, you could just have the Galaxy window open. Okay, so hopefully everyone has logged in to Galaxy Australia. 
We are using shared data today. So this data has already been uploaded to Galaxy Australia in the library. So now we'll get that data into our current history. So we're going to go to shared data in the top menu. We're going to click on data libraries. Then I'm going to look for Galaxy Australia training material. Then I'll click on metagenomics and then soil 16S metagenomics. And then I want all of these files, click all the files, click the two history button and then as data sets. I'm going to keep it in my current history. So I'll just click import. If you ever don't know where you are in Galaxy, you can always click this top left button that says Galaxy to bring you back to that main Galaxy page. So what we did then was we went to shared data, data libraries, Galaxy Australia training material, metagenomics, soil 16S metagenomics, and the five files to history. So now we should have five files in our current history. I'll give my history a name, so you can name it whatever you'd like, I'll call it metagenomics. Um, our file names are quite long, but I'll leave them for now because I can still see what they are. If you'd like to change any file names, you just click on the pencil icon next to the file. And you change the name, but keep the end of it so that we know what it was and then click save. I'll just do it for one of them. But that's not necessary. It's just optional. So now we'll follow the Galaxy Training Network tutorial. I've put a link into that in the tutorial material. Okay, so I'm going to uh, follow the instructions in this tutorial and you can follow along with me. If you get stuck, please just let me know in the chat window um, or if you want me to repeat a step. So we'll do half of this tutorial today, which is the Amplicon um, metagenomics steps. Okay, so we're looking at um, data sets today from Argentinian soils. And there's more information about that uh, there if you want to read about that in more detail. And in this tutorial, we will do um, section one, Amplicon data. So we're using the 16S gene today, which as I said, has this nice combination of being both highly conserved, but also having regions in it which are highly variable. We're using this mother tools this tutorial talks about how to import the data, but we've already done that. So we can skip over the import data steps. Okay, so our first thing to do is to use the tool called merge.files. This is going to merge our two input faster files. So in the tool panel on the left hand side, there's a search bar at the top and I'm going to write in there merge.files and you can see it's found the tool here. Click on that, merge.files. I'm just going to minimize my side panel there. 
Okay, so we've got some options here. We've got yeah. Okay, I've got a little cross sitting over that name, but that says merge and we want it to merge faster files so we can leave that as it is. And we want to tell it as an input to use two faster files. Which are the two that have the SRR in the name. The Galaxy's found four faster files and it's sort of saying to us, which of these faster files do you want to use? So we're telling it to use the two files, which are the pamper.faster and the anguil.faster. So it'll be, in my case, it's file number two and file number three. And then we can click execute. And that is that job in the top of our history panel. It's gray, which means it's queued. So just a reminder what, of what we did then. We looked in the tool panel for merge.files. We found merge files, we told it to use two of our input files, the anguil.faster and the pamper.faster, and then we clicked execute. So that's finished now, so that file is green, and Galaxy will put the most recent file at the top of your history. So the next thing we'll do is use a tool called make.group. So again, I'll search for that in the tool panel. There it is, make.group. So it says, what method to create this group file? We want to click on that drop down arrow and click manually specify. If your first uh, file is still waiting to run, um, that's okay. We can still do this second step and then we'll wait for everyone's to catch up. So now we're doing make.group. And we're saying what, what method to create this group file. We're saying manually specify the fast and files and group names. Then we're going to click this plus button. And it says faster, faster to group. We want to tell it to use the pamper file. So in my case, this is file number two. And we need to give it a name. So I'm going to give it the name Pamper. So this is a type of soil. So click the plus button again. And we need to tell it to use the other file here, that Anguil Faster, which is my file number three. And again, give that a name, Anguil. And then execute. So that doesn't rely on that first um, output file. That's still using the original input files. So you can set that running even if your first file is still queued. So I'll just repeat what we did then. We did make.group. We said manually specify. And then we click this plus button we told it to use the pamper faster file. We gave it a name, pamper. We did it again with the anguil file and gave that a name and execute. So we've made these two files 
from our input files. If your group file has finished, you can click on the eye icon next to it. And that will bring it up in the center panel. And it's just showing us two columns. We have the read names and then the sample group that that, that read is in. This is a very big file. So all the ones we can see at the top are all in the one sample, but further down, we would start to see the, the second sample. But I won't go all the way down there. Um, okay. Uh, is anyone still running? Please let me know on the chat if anyone's are still in the queue. Otherwise, we can continue. Uh, before we do our next step, I'll just show you um, in the tool panel, if you just type in mother as with a UR, not ER, you can see all the tools that are currently in Galaxy Australia under Mother. So if you're interested in doing this another time or, or using different tools in your workflow, um, that's one way to see all the tools available. Okay, so we'll continue on. Okay, our next step is to just keep the unique sequences and get rid of all the duplicate sequences because we don't need them all. So we're using a tool called unique.seeks. So I'll search for that. Click on that. So it's saying, what faster file should I use? And in many of our steps today in this tutorial, the file that we will want will often be the top file in that drop down list. And it will have the name of the previous tool that was used to make it. So in this case, we're saying, okay, what faster file should we use? Galaxy's found lots of faster files, but the top one is the file that we created from the merge files. So that's the file we want here. It's the it's the merged faster file. So I'll click on that. And in a lot of these tools as well, we can leave some of the things as default. So I'll usually only mention the options that we're changing. So for example, here, we're not doing anything with the name file, but the output format, we are setting that to the name file and then execute. So we did unique.seeks. We told it to use the merge.files faster file. And we told it in the output format to use the name file. So if you've never done any metagenomics analyses before, this probably already seems quite complicated and, and it is, and it would probably take a few goes through to really understand what's happening at every step. So don't worry if this seems complicated. Um, one thing you can always do is go back to look at the workflow and see what you're up to. So for example, we just did the unique.seeks step. Um, in the tutorial, I, I've put a picture of the workflow although it's a little bit small, um, but that can be one way of knowing where you are and what file you're using and what output you'll be sending to the next tool. So we are using the unique six tool here in the workflow. Okay, so that, that tool only kept our unique sequences. And we have two output files. And one of them is our faster file just of unique sequences. Uh, 
Okay. So how many sequences were actually unique? We can actually look at the number of lines in this FASTA file. Just by clicking on the file itself brings up some information underneath it. And this tells us we've got about 19 and a half thousand sequences. So almost 500 sequences were duplicate sequences. We also have a names file in the output. So you can click on the eye icon to view that. And this, this file is also a simple file, just two columns. We have the sequence names in one column and then the other sequences that are the same as that, in, that sequence in the first column. So it's keeping our information about our duplicate sequences. So if you scroll down a bit, you get to one that has a few different represent, representatives in it. Okay, so now we'll do the count sequences step. So we'll look for the tool count.seeks. So under name, we want to give it the unique seeks names file. User group file, yes, group. We will use the make.group group file. And that's all we need to do in that step. So we can then click execute. So what we did was count.seeks. We said use the unique.seeks names file. We said use a group file, yes. And we said group, we'll use the group file from make.group. So it all can sound a bit confusing, but while you're doing an analysis, particularly for the first time, if you always refer back to that flow chart, if you're unsure of where the files are coming from, that can be a big help. So this file is telling us how many sequences in each of those unique sequence groups. Okay, so now we'll do quality control step. We're going to use the tool called summary.seeks. So for faster, it says faster parameter, we will use, so again, we'll use the top file in that list that Galaxy's found. So that's the faster file from the unique.seeks tool. We don't have to do anything with name. With count, we will use the file count.seeks count table. And we want to keep our log file here because we want the information. So under output log file, click yes, and then click execute. So what we did was summary.6. We said our faster file is the file from unique.6. Our count file is the file from count.seeks. 
and yes to the log file. So that should be darker gray and then execute. Um, we've got a question about um, is, it, is it the default in Galaxy to keep that log file or not? I think it depends on the tool. Um, so often the log file doesn't tell you anything very interesting. So I think for a lot of tools, the default is not to keep it. But in some cases, we do want that out, out, that log file. So we'll click yes. So we've got two summary files. So let's have a look at that log file first with the eye icon. We scroll down a little bit, we can see a table and this is giving us some information. So what we can see, the total number of unique sequences as we knew was uh, 19,502. But this also gives us some information about the lengths. So we can see that a lot of our sequences are between 242 and 275 in length. And we can see that there's some ambiguous bases in some sequences. And there's also um, some homopol homopolymers. So this is information that we can use for um, some quality control. Okay, so we will use that information in our next tool, which is screen.seq. So we need to tell it which faster file to use. That's the file from the unique.seq. So usually we are using our most recent file because we're sending our file through a pipeline and doing various things to it. So in this case, we want that unique.seq file. Some of these things we can leave as they are, but for min length, so you can see min length here, we'll set that to 225. Because we only want to keep sequences that are between 225 and 275. So max length we will set to 275. So for the max and big parameter, we will set that to zero. And then to deal with these homopolymers, we'll set max homo p to h. We can leave everything else as it is, but we can go all the way down to the count option and we'll tell it to use that file from the count.seq step. and then execute. So what we did was screen.seq told it to use the faster file from unique6, told it to use this min length and max length. So min length we set as 225, max length we set as 275, we set the maximum ambiguous spaces to zero and the maximum homopolymer length to eight. And we told it to use the count table from count.seq.
Okay, so we've got three output files from the screen.seeks tool. And we can have a look at those. You can always have a look at your files in Galaxy with the eye icon. So you've got our good faster file. So this is our filtered faster file with all of our reads in it. This file called bad acnos, this tells us um, the sequences that were removed. So 1,804. And then we also have a count file. Okay, so we've been doing all this processing with our faster file and keeping a record of the counts of the sequences, keeping a record of which groups of sequences are unique. And now we're ready to do this step where we align our fast file to a multiple sequence alignment from a well curated database of the 16S gene. So at the start, we imported a file that we need for this, which is the silver faster file. So we don't need to re-import that. I'll just wait a bit while everyone's catch up. Um, the silver database, you can look that up um, to find out more about it. There are several databases that people use if they're doing this step in metagenomics. Um, another one is green genes that you might have heard of. Um, so that can affect the results. So you obviously want to know a little bit more about the database when you're choosing it. But the silver one is meant to be very good and it has lots of information there about it. Okay, so is everyone up to this align sequences step? I'll just show you where we are in our workflow, just to reiterate what we've done so far. So what we've done, we merged our files, we made a group file. This step where we removed duplicate sequences, but we also wanted to keep a count um, of the sequences. Then we did um, a summary six step where we wanted to get some information for doing the quality control. So we did quality control with the screen.seeks tool and we filtered out these reads that were too short, so they were shorter than 225 base pairs, reads that were too long, they were longer than 275. And also we filtered out some things that had um, ambiguous bases or runs of um, the same base, so homopolymers. And now we're up to this step. So we've taken this faster file, uh, we've got the unique sequences, we've only kept some of the good quality sequences, and we're ready to align it to a multiple alignment. So this, this multiple alignment from the silver database is the 16S gene but it's lots of different species. So the alignment itself is actually very, very wide because it includes information from all of the species. So where they don't match up, then there, there are um, gaps in the alignment. So we're doing step number seven, aligning our FASTA file to this external reference um, FASTA file.
So we will use the align.6 tool. So for the faster file, we will tell it to use the output from that previous step, which was screen.6. So we're using screen.6 good faster. Then we need to tell it this reference um, that we want it to use. So we'll tell it to get that reference from our history. So click your history. Then we need to tell it the file name. And this was a file we got in at the very start. So it's the silver.v4.faster file. Most of these things we'll keep as they are, but the flip setting we'll set to yes. And then execute. So just repeat what we did then. We did align.6. We said which faster file to use. We want the screen.6 good.faster file. We said select, select reference template from your history. We said reference, reference to align with the file silver.v4.faster. Your file may be called HTTPS Zenodo, but it will end in silver.v4.faster. Everything else we could leave the same except we set flip to yes and then execute. So this step is going to probably take a few minutes. So I'll pause while that runs and I'll have a quick look at the discussion board. Um, if you're having trouble with any of your steps or you've missed a step, um, you can always get the shared history for this analysis. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. It's, I also mentioned how to do it in the tutorial document. So the way you would get it is, is you would go to shared data, histories, And then these are all the published histories that people share. So I, I don't recommend doing this if all your analyses are going well and you've got all the files running, but um, if you want to access this shared history, um, either now or at another time, you would just click on the um, history called completed soil metagenomics analysis. And then you will probably have an import button up here. And then that will bring it into your current history. But if everything's running okay, just um, probably best not to do that right now.
So in all of these tools that we're using, obviously there are a lot of settings and we're not talking in a lot of detail about how we choose different settings, but I will show you the, um, the link to the mother tools because they have a really nice description of what's going on. So if you search for mother and then go to the wiki, They have really good documentation about all of the tools. So I know we've got a question about what the flip, um, the flip setting is. I'll show you how you, you can find out more about that. Um, so I'm just looking at the manual. The commands. So it has information about all of the commands. We were doing a line dot six. And this just shows you the depth of information that's available. So this talks all about just that particular tool within the suite of tools. Um, it's not showing you as it appears in Galaxy. This is showing it in a command line setting, but the information's the same. And then there's information on all of the options. So we were looking at the flip option. And there's information here about why you might set that flip option to yes. I won't try and explain that because I think it will be better explained here in the documentation but it's good to know that that's where you can go to get all of this detailed information about all of the parameters in each of the tools. got a question about why we might want to use the silver database instead of the green genes database. I don't know a lot about that, but um, reading on the, um, the mother ball is... Oh, I need to mute myself. I can hear someone. Um. Um, yeah, the, there's just differences in how, how well each database is curated um, and I think how well the alignment has been made of those um, sequences. So um, yeah, I'm not an expert on, on that, but um, I'll just correct you with another Um, you hear about the way that the alignment is made, but yeah, use your own judgment there. Um, there's a lot of information in there about um, green genes and silver. But I won't go over it here, but that's probably a good place to start. Okay, my line six steps have finished. We'll just do a few more steps before we have a 10 minute break. Okay, so we did the align six step. 
uh, we've got three output files. One of our files here is called the align file, which is, um, this is actually the faster file. So in further steps, we'll be using this file um, for further, in further tools. We will do another summary seeks step here. So I'm going to look for summary seeks. So it's saying which faster file to use. And that's the file that's called align.seeks on data 1 and 12, or 1 and 13, align. So that's actually a faster file. Okay, name, we don't have to do anything with count. We want the file from screen.seeks. So again, the top file in that list. And we also want the log file here. So click yes for output log file. So I'll just repeat that. We did summary.seeks. We told it to use the faster file from align.seeks, the align file. We told it to use the count table from screen.six and we told it to yes keep that output log file. Uh, some of you are still waiting for your align files to finish so I'll just wait for those to um, finish. While we're waiting, I'll just show you um, another feature of Galaxy tools. When we use a tool in Galaxy, so for example, this tool that we just used called summary.seeks, it brings up the tool interface in the middle, but it also has a lot of useful information below. So this tool, it's telling us it's from the mother suite of tools. It's often got links to further documentation and citations. So I'll just wait a few minutes for everyone's alignment step to um, finish running. Um, just a question about how we found out that information about the mother tool where we used the flip option. So I was just showing in a general sense how we can get information about um, mother tools. So you can either get it from the tool interface, the links there, or even just a search. So I just did a Google search. So I just typed in mother with a UR. Actually, I don't want the blog. So there's a mother website and that has links to the wiki, which is the documentation. Um, and in this one, I was looking for the, um, the commands, so the individual tools. So I think I went to the, the mother manual. So that's a link down here, mother manual. Or you could just Google mother manual. This has some of the steps grouped um, by um, sort of the main thing that's going on. So that can be useful to read through. You can read some of these headings here, or you can just look at the commands themselves. So this is the commands category index, commands. And we were looking at the align six tool before. And I was just showing you how with each of these tools, there's often a lot of documentation about what all the parameters mean. So we were interested in knowing what the flip parameter was. And it, 
explains that in detail here. It explains it in the command line form, but the information is the same. So hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, you can just Google mother commands or mother.org and you should be able to find the links to all of those tools. Um, we are doing a particular workflow today, but there are other ways of doing workflows with the mother tools. So when I said that there were, um, these tools were grouped in these sort of operations, this can be quite a useful way to see the alternatives. So if we were looking at something like um, sequence processing, it tells us all the tools you might use in that general task. So that's really useful. It shows you sort of the, the amount of tools and the way you might string them together the way you might use different tools. We haven't done the Chimera identification today, but this shows you that there are lots of tools involved for identifying Chimeras and you may prefer one tool over another. Okay, so we're almost ready to look at our alignments. We're just waiting for a couple of people's ones to finish off. Um, I think what we'll do here is we'll have a, um, a 10 minute break here and we'll come back at 2.35. And so that will give everyone's alignment files to finish, a chance to finish off. And then we'll keep going from there. So um, yeah, 10 minute break, feel free to um, add to the discussion board or ask any questions in there. And we will we'll return at 2.35.
Okay, welcome back everyone. Okay, so we'll continue on the tutorial. Um, I'm not gonna answer a lot of questions in the discussion board, but I just wanna point it out to you if, you're, if you haven't opened it, um, there's a lot of really interesting discussion going on and um, good questions and answers. So I highly recommend having a look at that. The link to that discussion board is in our schedule. So the link is tinyurl.com slash Galaxy Workshop 4 hyphen discussion. Um, so there's a lot of questions in there about which databases we would use, uh, why we might prefer one over the other, um, how we get database files into Galaxy, and also questions about overall suites of tools for metagenomics. So today we're using the mother suite of tools, but there are other sets of tools, um, in particular Chime. Um, so we're not using that, but that obviously exists and a lot of other sets of tools exist. So um, I'll provide some references at the end to um, additional material for metagenomics. I won't go over anything in the discussion board right now. I think we'll continue on so that we finish in time. Um, so we ran the Align 6 step and then got some summary data. So we have two output files from summary.seeks. And let's have a look at our log file. So this is, we've aligned our filtered sequences to this multiple 16S ribosomal RNA gene alignment. Um, there were a lot of gaps in that alignment because it used a lot of different species, but we want to see how our FASTA file aligned to that alignment. So what this log file is telling us is that most of our sequences aligned between um, two positions in that alignment. So predominantly between position 3080 and 13424. So spans um, a 10,000 uh, base uh, region, and that's where most of our sequences have aligned. And almost 18,000 sequences aligned. So the next thing we're going to do is filter out sequences that didn't align in that region um, because we know that this is the V4 target region. So we don't want anything that didn't align in this area. So we'll use the screen.seeks tool. So we'll tell it to use that aligned FASTA file. So the top file there, we'll tell it to start at that position 3080 and end at 13424. Leave the other things as they are, but go to the count option and tell it to use the screen seeks count table. Okay, so execute. So what we did there, we did screen.seeks. We said, use the aligned faster file we said start at 3080, whoops, end. We said end at 13424. So we know that most of our sequences align in that area. And we tell it 
to use the count table from screen six. So as a refresher of where we're up to, so we did the alignment step. We looked at that log file and we saw most of the things were in that 10,000 base region. So we did a screen six step where we're saying, don't keep anything that's not in this region. So we've got three output files. Again, we can look at this file called bad acnos, which tells us everything that was removed. So we've removed four and a half thousand um, sequences because they weren't in that V4 region. So we're also now going to take out anything that um, even overlaps the ends of this region. I'll just wait a minute while other people's jobs run. So in this next step, when we, when we do it, um, we're also going to take out all of the dot characters, which are um, just what are called external gap characters, which we no longer need. We have whole columns, which are just dots from where this um, set of sequences aligned to that 16S file. So we can just take them out. If you're interested, you can always look at that original silver uh, file with the eye icon. And as you can see, it's very, very wide. So there are a lot of um, gaps in it. And every now and again, you get the, um, the bases at those positions for those taxa. So yeah, it's just a very large file. Is everyone's screen six jobs uh, finished? Okay, so now we'll do the filter. Oh, I'm still just waiting for a couple more. That's okay, we'll just wait for those jobs to finish. Um, while we're waiting, I might just point out some other things with Galaxy Australia on the front page. Um, if you haven't used Galaxy Australia before, um, it's important to know about the user data storage policy. So there's a link to that on that front Galaxy page. So we highly recommend that you understand the policy about how long files will be kept on the Galaxy Australia server. So Galaxy Australia will keep a record of your histories, but not forever. So Galaxy is not really designed to be a storage area for your analysis, but rather a, a platform for doing the analysis. And then you would download 
um, your files to, you, to your local or other cloud storage. So please know the, the storage policy there. And if you want to know more about how you can actually download your data, um, there's a tutorial linked in this page here. If you want a tool that is not currently on Galaxy Australia or a reference database, you can request it here at this link. And Galaxy has a really nice graph showing the activity on the server. Um, obviously very busy now with all of us doing our metagenomics. But if you're doing a big analysis, um, you might want to always check the current status of the server and perhaps schedule it for a quieter time. If you uh, lose the link to the Galaxy training in general, there's a link to that here as well, um, online training material. And that's what we're linked to today and what we're using. And if you wanna look at the Galaxy training network material, So they have a lot of great material. So we're using some of their metagenomics material today. We are doing the tutorial, which is the, um, the global picture and the hands-on gives the link to that tutorial. And we use these slides here. So there are these additional tutorials um, if you want to do more um, galaxy analysis. And there's also a lot of other topics, as you can see here. Okay, so is everyone's screen seeks jobs finished? I think we'll continue on for there. So now we'll do the filter seek step. So let's just keep the um, good faster file from the previous step. Keep everything as it is except for the Trump character and put that as the full stop. I'll repeat that again in a minute for those who are still waiting for some files. Um, while we're waiting, I might show you another thing in Galaxy. Uh, at the start, I was talking about the View All Histories button in the top of the history pane. So it looks like an open book. And if you click on that, if you've done previous work on Galaxy Australia, you might have several histories here. So they are all kept here. and you can switch to different histories. You can also create new histories. And a really nice thing here is that you can drag files from one history into a new history if you want to use them in a different analysis. So for example, I could create a new history and want to use that silver file in it. And I'll just drag it and it makes a copy of it in this new history. But I don't want to do that now, so let's just delete it. And I'll go back to the metagenomics work that we're doing. 
And to get back to that main page, you can either click Analyze Data or you can click Galaxy Australia. Okay, so if you're still waiting to do that filter six step, you want to go to filter six. We will tell it to use the file from screen six. So screen dot six on data 15 and 16 good dot faster. And then the Trump character we are set to the dot. And then execute. Okay, so looking at where we're up to, we did the screen seek step. Remove those sequences that were not in the V4 region. And now we're doing the filter six step. We're removing anything that's overhanging that region and any gaps. So um, people let me know in the chat if the screen six or filter six is still running. Still waiting for a few. I'll just talk about the next step that we're going to do which is really one of these key steps in the analysis, which is working out what organisms are present in the samples. So we're clustering by sequence similarity to find these operational taxonomic units, um, which is sort of a proxy for a taxon. And in our case, we're clustering by 97% similarity and that's roughly equal to a genus, but not exactly. So there's a diagram here showing how these clusters um, are grouped by that sequence similarity. Okay, so if, if you're having trouble with your files not running, I recommend that you um, import the shared history for this analysis so that you can get that file in. So I'll explain how to do that again. So go to shared data, histories, and then the completed soil metagenomics analysis and then uh, yours will probably say import this history and that will give you all the files okay so we'll do the next step and if your previous files didn't work import that shared history so that you have the files. Okay, we're gonna do a, um, a pre-cluster step. This is where we're grouping anything 
uh, which has up to two differences. So any sequences that have two difference, differences um, in their base pairs. So search for pre.cluster. The faster file, we want that top file from filter six. Name file <clears throat> or count table to the screen six count table and diffs to two. So we need pre.cluster, the faster file from the filter six step, the name file from the screen six step, and the diffs to two. So in our flow chart, we're doing this step here. So we're clustering sequences with up to two differences. So I'll just do that step one more time. So this is the pre-cluster step. So we're going to pre.cluster we're telling it to use the faster file from the filter six step. So that will probably be the top file in your list. So filter dot six filtered faster. Name file, we want it to use the screen dot six count table. Nothing to change under group and diffs, so the number of differences between sequences that we allow, we'll put as two and then execute. And then if you wanna see how many um, groups of sequences we're left with after that. You can just click on the faster file in history and it tells us there are 10,398 sequences left. So we started with 20,000 sequences, we've done some filtering and some grouping and now we're down to about 10,000 sequences. Okay, that's our pre-cluster step. Now we're gonna do a step uh, with classification. So this uses two input files that we got um, at the start, so we don't need to import them here. We're going to use the tool called classify.six. So we're taking these clusters of sequences that we got in that previous step and we're comparing them to some reference files and then giving them taxonomic identifications. So we're doing classify.six. We're saying use our most recent faster file from that pre-cluster step select reference from history, reference file to use. We want to use the train set, some numbers, dot PDS, dot tax. So that'll probably be near the bottom because it was one of our um, original input files. Oh, hang on, where is that? 
sorry, pds.faster, not, not .tax. Okay, so train set, some numbers, .pds.faster, that's our faster file. And select taxonomy from history. And then tell that to use the train set .pds, .pds tax. So we're telling it to use these two input files and then leave those other things and under count. We want the count table from pre cluster. And execute. So let's go over that again. We did classify.seeks. We said use our pre cluster faster file. Use a reference template from history. Use our um, training set, our PDS faster file. Select taxonomy from history. And then tell it to use that pds.tax file. And for the count file, tell it to use the pre-cluster count table. And then execute. So this one may also take five minutes or so. So while that runs, I'll have a look at the discussion board.
Okay, so your um, Classify Six tool may still be running. Um, could you let me know in the chat if if your classify when your classify dot seeks tool finishes? And just a reminder, if you want to import the history of all of these tools, I mean all of these um, analyses, and keep going using that history, you can uh, under shared data and histories. And it's the soil metagenomics history. Okay, it looks like they're all still running, so I'll just wait a little bit for that to run. Obviously, this is slightly unusual um, setting in that we're all running the same tools on the same Galaxy server, so um, we just have to be a little bit patient during workshops while all the tools run. So I'll talk about what we're going to do in our next step. We won't do it yet, but um, I'll just give you some information about it. We're going to use the cluster.split tool. And in this case, the way that this tool is working in Mother is that it's binning the sequences by their taxonomy and then it's clustering within each of those bins. So there are various ways to do um, that clustering. Um, you can do it in several steps, you can do it in different ways, uh, but this is one way. So that's what's happening in our next tool. So let's just set up our tool, even if your previous jobs are still running, we can still get it set up. So search for cluster split, so cluster.split. So it's, there's a lot of things happening in this step, I guess is what I mean. Um, it's only one tool, but there's lots going on. So we want to split by classification using FASTA. So FASTA file, we will use the pre.class cluster FASTA file. Taxonomy is from the classify.6 step. Name file or count table is from pre-cluster. Clustering method to average neighbour and cut off to 0.15. So I'll just repeat what we did then. We are now using the cluster.split tool. We'll split by classification using FASTA, the FASTA file from pre-cluster, taxonomy from classify.6, name file or count table from pre-cluster, clustering method, we're using average neighbour, and cut off 0.15. So if your previous um, tools have all run, then you're okay to click execute. So if your classify seeks tool uh, finished running, which 
hopefully it did or it will soon, uh, we can look at that output. So remember th that this step was taking those clustered sequences, we've, we've let up to two differences um, occur between our clusters, and then using an input file, classified those sequence groups. So let's have a look at it. Classify.seq taxonomy output. So we have a column here of the reads and then their classification. And that's hierarchical. So starting with bacteria and all the way down, often to something unclassified because so much in metagenomics hasn't been seen before, but sometimes um, to, a, to a genus. Okay, and then we ran cluster split. So everyone's cluster split is probably queued, possibly running. So once again, I know this seems very complicated and it is complicated. We're not really trying to promise that it's not, but just wanting to give you an overview of how you might get started at um, using Galaxy Australia for metagenomics. A lot of metagenomics courses would be much longer than this, so we can't cover all of the detail, but hopefully it's just giving you this overview of what is possible, um, at least for a simple analysis, in this case, of the 16S data, and then getting you ready for doing more complex analyses in Galaxy Australia. So let's look at our flow chart again. We did the clustering of sequences with up to two differences. We did the classification of these sequences based on some um, information from input files. And now we are assigning a classification to each of these sequence groups. So I have very much simplified the annotation in this flowchart, but hopefully it's giving you um, an overview of what's going on. So I'm just going to go on mute for five minutes while cluster split runs and I will have another look at the discussion board.
Okay, so um, cluster split is um, taking a lot of galaxy uh, disk space. So it's probably going to be too slow for us all to run it at the same time um, in this workshop. So what we'll do is we'll, if you haven't already accessed the um, shared history for this tutorial, um, let's get that shared history now so that we can look at this cluster split file. So let's go to shared data in the top panel, histories, And then the third one down is the completed soil metagenomics analysis. So click on that. And then you probably have an import button. So click on that import button to get it into your current history. What I'm going to do is just get the cluster split file on its own. So I can keep showing you the, the steps. Just got to wait for Galaxy to load. Okay, and then we only have four more steps uh, in this workflow. Um, if, if um, Simon, if you can hear me, if cluster split is taking up too much um, of Galaxy, could you maybe end those jobs, the cluster split jobs? Thanks. So your job might end up with a red cross next to it, which means the job... Um, has, is not running. <laughs> That's okay. And you should have in your history the imported history for this analysis. So you'll have all of the files, but I'll show you how we um, do the next steps. Okay, so let's assume our cluster split job ran, which it would usually, but just not when 80 of us are doing it at once. So we ran our cluster split job. And let's have a look at our output. If you had trouble getting the shared history, just ask your local facilitator. Or let me know in the chat window if there's a problem. Okay, so cluster split. Let's have a look at that output with the eye icon. So we end up with a table here. So now we want to use another tool called make shared. And we want to know how many sequences are in each OTU from each of these sample groups that have 97% similarity. So if we go to our tool window, 
and search for make.shared. So our input type is OTU list. Our list, we want the output from cluster split. Supply group or count table. This is the pre-cluster count table. And then for label, if you click in that box and click on 0.03, that's our 97% um, threshold, our similarity. Okay, so just um, repeat what we did there. We went to make.shared. We said uh, the input type is an OTU list. We want to use that list from cluster split. We want the, so the, to supply the group or the count table, which is the pre-cluster count table, and the label to 0.03. And execute. So looking at our flowchart again, what we're doing here is we're making a table of the counts per OTU per sample group. So we have two sample groups. We have, I think, more than 4,000 OTUs. And then they are defined by the 97% sequence similarity. And then we have the counts of the sequences in each of those cells in the table. This is our make.shared file. So that's giving us a table. We can also set up our next job, which is our classify.otu. So let's search for classify.otu. So we give it a list from our cluster split output. Leave name empty, count to the count table from pre-cluster. Select taxonomy from history. Taxonomy is the output from classify seeks. And the label is 0.03. And execute. So that doesn't need anything from our other tool, our make.shared tool. So classify.otu can be running. So what this is giving us is OTUs in a column, the counts and the taxonomy, so that the, um, the classified taxonomy for each OTU. So now we'll have a look at the visualization. We're going to use the Krona tool. First, we need to format our file for Krona. So in the tool panel, if you just search for Krona, K-R-O-N-A, and click on the tool called Taxonomy to Krona, 
This is just a conversion step. Okay, so we need to tell it to use a collection of files here. So there are three file icons under taxonomy file. We need to tell it to use the third one, which is a data set collection. And then tell it to use the output from classify.otu. and then execute. I'll just repeat that classify OTU step. While well, that's running, so we did classify.otu. We said list, OTU list, the output from cluster split, nothing for name, count, the pre-cluster count table, so select taxonomy from history, and then the reference to use for that is the classify.seeks taxonomy file and the label 0.03 and execute. Just classify OTU, not classify seeks. And then we ran a conversion file where we converted that collection of files. So classify OTU has given us three files. Oh. Actually, I forgot to tell you a step. In that classify OTU, could you rerun it? We actually want to tell it to do that per sample, because we want to compare our two samples at the end, our two sets of samples. So could you rerun classify.otu? So again, um, list the output from cluster split, nothing under name, count the table, the count table from pre-cluster, Select taxonomy from history. Taxonomy reference from classifier six. Label to 0.03. And then what I want us to do, because this is more interesting, is if we scroll down and there's a per sample option. So click yes for that so that the yes is dark gray. So per sample, Yes, and then execute. Okay, so this is our classify OTU step. While that's running, let's set up our conversion step again. So search for Krona in the tools. Click on taxonomy to Krona. Just wait for that classify OTU step to finish.
So where we are in the flowchart is almost finished. We've got some tables with information about our OTUs, the counts um, of sequences in each OTU and in each sample. And soon we are going to format that for Krona and then we're going to visualise it with Krona and get these pie charts. So rather than wait for that to finish, because we're using an imported history, let's just use the file we already have. So let's go to taxonomy to Krona Click on, the, click on the collection icon, so the data set collection. And then um, click on your classify.otu output that's in your shared history. So not your most recent one, um, the earlier one, because this is the one that has been done per sample. Uh, execute. And then again in the tool panel, um, search for Krona. And then we're going to click on Visualize with Krona. So again, we want to use a data set collection. Let's use our taxonomy to Krona um, formatted file and execute. So let's look at the output from that. Even if yours haven't finished running right now, you can look in your shared history for the file that is the Krona on collection file. So if you click on that, that, that should have three files in it. And this is where we can look at our um, pie charts. So let's make this bigger. Let's look at our sample, this Anguil sample first with the eye icon. So this is what's in this soil type. These are the bacteria in this soil type. And we can look at a particular group of bacteria. We can just click on one of the groups. and look at that in more detail. So you can get a lot of information about what species are in your samples. So let's go back to all of the species, all the taxa. Let's compare our two samples. Let's look at Acidobacteria, just as an example. So if we click on that, it's telling us that, that they comprise 30% of the bacteria in this sample. So these, this soil type, 36% of the bacteria are acidobacteria. So let's compare it to the other sample, the Pampa sample. Click on the eye icon next to that hamper output. Let's find acidobacteria again. And in this sample, they only comprise 26% of the bacteria. So I'll leave the tutorial there. Um, I'm just going to do a brief summary of what we did.
to refresh what, what we covered in today's workshop. So what we covered, we aim to familiarise you with Galaxy Australia, briefly introduce metagenomics, and I'm sorry it's so brief, but we're really trying to fit it into this three hour workshop. Look at 16S um, Ampicon metagenomics and look at some of the tools in Galaxy that you could use to do those analyses. We covered what Galaxy is and we used the Galaxy Australia server. We did these main steps in the um, Amplicon metagenomics where we removed duplicates, we aligned to a 16S database, we did some clustering and classified our OTUs, and then we got pie charts of abundances. The workflow itself, we did a lot of separate steps in there. We did some pre-processing where we merged our files we removed duplicates. We kept a record of the counts. We did a summary sequencer step to get QC information where we could then filter out long reads and short reads. We did the alignment step to 16S. We looked at the log file again and saw that some of the sequences didn't align in this V4 region. So we removed those sequences and we removed any gaps. We clustered any sequences that had up to two differences so we could allow for a sequencing error. And then we used some reference information to classify these groups of sequences. So we got each sequence assigned to an OTU, and then we got some tables of information about the samples and the OTUs, their classification and the counts. So we got all of this um, information, and a nice way of viewing at that is with the Kroner tool for the abundances. So we can start to compare our samples by their um, composition. So this part of metagenomics, we haven't covered today any further statistical analyses that you might do, but um, here are some links if you want to do further analyses. So you might want to use um, packages in R, such as the microbiome R package or PhiloSeq. <clears throat> PhiloSeq has a lot of really nice um, tools in it, and some of these are being wrapped and added to Galaxy Australia. So we'll keep you posted on um, the development of that in Galaxy Australia. Um, some references are included here for further information, um, particularly if you're getting started in metagenomics. And further training, here are some links to the Galaxy Australia training and also the Galaxy Training Network, the international um, training network, and thanking them very much for the use of their material today. So this is the last workshop in our set of four workshops this year. So um, I'd just like to thank everyone involved in all of the workshops, um, particularly all of the facilitators at the locations around Australia and everyone behind the scenes, the developers, the project management, the organisers, and also to all of you for coming. So thank you very much. And I will hand back to Jeff. Thank you, Anna. I'll just share my screen. Okay, uh, so hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, so yeah, thanks Anna very much for developing and leading this session. Um, also to all of the facilitators at all of the participating nodes um, for volunteering your time um, and contributing your effort in ensuring that this training has occurred at each node. And I know there's been a lot of, uh, uh, as, as always in these, in these Galaxy sessions, a lot of activity in the discussion board. So thank you for your um, uh, contributions to the discussion board as well. Um, also, I'd like to thank all of the attendees for coming along and being so engaged in this session. Um, so I just wanted to say that we, uh, at, for EMBL ABR training events, 
Um, just keep an eye out on our website. Um, we also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. Um, and, and that's how you can find out about upcoming training events. Um, we have both webinars and hands-on sessions like today. So at the moment, we um, have some webinars listed there. So if you go to the link here, emble-abi.org.au slash about events, uh, you'll see all of the upcoming events. Uh, I just wanted to say, or, or just remind you that uh, we've re been recording today's uh, workshop and that will be made available on our YouTube channel. So there's a link to our YouTube channel there, um, tinyurl.com slash YouTube hyphen emble hyphen ABR. Um, and you can also find uh, there's recordings of 11 past training events that our network has conducted throughout 2018. So just a couple of things before you leave. Um, we would really like it if you could spend some time to uh, complete an evaluation survey. Um, it's short, it only takes a couple of minutes and there's a link to that in the bottom of the discussion board. So if you can fill that out, we'd really appreciate that. And we're interested um, as always in your feedback, both on the content, um, but also in this mode of delivery where we have this distributed model. Uh, with the with the training over video conferencing. So we're really interested to know what worked and what didn't work for you. Um, and as I said, the link is at the bottom of that page. Uh, finally, uh, we would just, oh, I should also say that that discussion board, um, don't, I mean, feel free to keep on writing uh, questions in there. We'll be monitoring it for the next 10 minutes or so. Um, so yeah, keep on adding, adding um, uh, questions into that. There was previously a question about how long are these uh, resources going to be available for, um, and the answer is in perpetuity. So we won't be uh, removing any of these. So you'll be able to access the discussion board and obviously all of the materials into the future. Um, so just before we leave, uh, I'd like to just also acknowledge some funders. So um, EMBL ABR, we are um, supported both from Bioplatforms Australia and the University of Melbourne. Um, and, and, and as Anna said, that the Galaxy Australia's um, would like to acknowledge funding from the Australian Research Data Commons uh, through both the Data Enhanced Virtual Laboratory and Research Data Cloud programs. So thanks again, everybody, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at an upcoming training event. Thanks and goodbye. <laughs>